Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and by now you should have seen the announcement that the newest SFO Grimhammer patch, Kingdoms and Wildlands, is releasing later this week. As per usual, Venus reached out with some early access so I can show you some of the changes coming to quite a lot of the factions. So, not full overhaul reworks, but rather giving them a breath of fresh air and making sure that they tie more in line with that of Warhammer 3. There's a bunch of races actually getting this, so you'll get a multitude of different videos throughout this week. What we're going to do today is talk about Norska, because Norska hasn't been in a very good place throughout the whole of the Warhammer series. Mods have been making them a little bit better, let's be honest, so let's check out what changes are happening in this patch, and what we're going to do is we're going to read over the faction and effects for each of the Lords too, as well some things could be the same as previous SFO patches, a few other things have changed and the idea is just in case you've never played SFO before, you can see why you might be interested. So, faction effects. Unique technologies focusing on Marauder units. Campaign movement range plus 1% per character rank for Lords. Free unit of Marauder champions in every Wolfric battle. Bonus versus large plus 5 for Marauder infantry units. Unique units. Huskulls, capacity per major settlement. And I'm not even going to try and pronounce that second one. Capacity per minor settlement. Let's try it. Ulf Hedna? Yeah, we're going to go with that. Lord effects are as follows. Uh, recruitment range plus 100% for Lord's Army. Upkeep minus 20% for Marauder units in Lord's Army. And attribute causes fear in Lord's Army. So there's a few changes to the tech tree, but we're going to focus purely on the specific stuff here. Obviously, you're going to notice a few things which are unnamed and so on at the moment. That's because I'm on an early build. You guys will have the proper build this coming release. But yeah, all these techs focus on your Marauders, because if you're going to play as Wolfric, you're going to be using a lot of Marauder armies. It's going to be the human side of Norska because everything is kind of being separated there and I kind of like that. It just makes it feel a bit more fun and a bit more thematic. You're basically getting two different sides here. There's obviously the second part which is the one below and that's going to focus on a little bit of administration, uh, wound recovery time, ambush success chance, uh, campaign line of sight, you know, the usual stuff that you want to boost up your forces but from a different point of view, extra hero recruit rank and all that different type of stuff. And it'll be a bit different when you play as Frog the Troll King. So faction effects are unique technologies focusing on troll and familiar units. Diplomatic relations minus 25 with Norska. Yes, you're going to be fighting against all the other Norskan tribes. Construction time minus 1 for all buildings, minimum of 1 turn. Construction cost minus 25% for all buildings. Casualty replenishment rate plus 20% for all troll units. And unique units, river trolls stone trolls and bile trolls. When it comes to Lord Effects, we have the following. Control plus 5 in own local province. All units in Frog's army immune to all attrition. Uh, Chaos Undivided Corruption plus 5 for local province. And income from all buildings plus 25% for local province. So when it comes to tech with Frog, you're going to have the same format in terms of layout styling, but it's going to be very different, okay? So the top stuff is going to focus on your trolls, all the usual type of stuff that you would expect from a monster-based army, whereas the bottom stuff is going to focus mostly on, again, administration, but a little bit different. So you're going to get more control, you're going to get more uh, corruption being spread out, uh, minus enemy growth, more growth for you, income from buildings. It's going to be a lot different to, say, Wolfric, who focused on heroes. This is to give you more incentivization to play both factions. If you like Wolfric's Marauder base one, there you've got it. And if you want to play more a horde monster type of situation, well, then you've got Frog. And I think that that's a great way to add some distinction as, yeah, you know, replayability, even if the factions are close together, but they do play a little bit differently, that does allow for people to see it as a different thing. So Plunder is a new resource unique to the Norskins. You'll gain this from battles, buildings, characters, events, and raising, and you'll be using them in buildings and technologies. You'll be gaining them naturally as you start progressing through your campaign. You'll be getting them from just you know, getting into combat, which is something that you expect from a game called Total War Warhammer. And yeah, just the usual stuff. There's not a lot. There's actually a peak 
a limit of 1000 so you're going to have to make sure that you're using them and not just putting them to waste this is going to go into other buildings for example which will generate naturally one per turn all the way up to five per turn i believe so it's not like you're going to find yourself wanting this is obviously quite important to keep an eye out because it does become part of your key norskin experience now you would have already known some changes over here but we'll talk about that a little bit later as we still need to talk about technology you see plunder itself is linked up to a bunch of your technology and this can be found in the plunder section. I'm a massive fan of modders diversifying the different types of technology by making separate tabs as it just makes it easier on the eye. So this is stuff that you're already used to. A few things have changed in terms of, you know, just the bonuses provided and so on. Some of them are a little bit better now and it's linked all up to the plunder which kind of makes it more thematic. You know, you're going to specific areas like Altdorf and so on. If you're going to to take those areas you need to plunder it and get the bonuses from plundering so yeah pretty cool section and i actually really do like this i feel like this just makes everything feel more flavorful right more warhammer fantasy and obviously that's something that we're all expecting from this series i've been able to play with norska for a few hours now and honestly it feels very very good i'm actually quite happy with how everything's turned out you might have noticed some big changes when it comes to Norskin recruitment. You see the grand majority of the units are found in military recruitment or in their actual settlement building, whereas the other stuff is more focused around support, buffing up your troops. Obviously, you've got that one building that focuses on your shamans and your forsaken, but the majority of your troops will be found in free buildings. This is to make it so you can turn them into like Norskin raiding houses, right? You can decide to focus buildings on upgrading certain units more than anything else and also just making recruitment a little bit better. Let's be honest, Norska doesn't really have the best settlements in general, so this does fix up a lot of major issues. From my experience, I've been recruiting troops a lot faster, actually, which means that even early into my campaigns, I've been having more varied stuff, I've been getting more higher tier units, and I've actually been able to pack more of a punch, which is desperately needed when other factions such as the Empire do start getting into the higher tier units a little bit quicker so now I actually have a little bit more to hit with. So a little change here which is actually quite good is that raising settlements obviously you'll get your usual bonuses but now it also replenishes movement range for your characters that do the actual raising and you'll also generate plunder per turn. The movement capacity replenishment is actually quite good considering that uh, sometimes you might be pushing into an enemy territory you just want to get rid of certain buildings you want to build up there as it's going to lock you down and yeah, you're going to become a target. Plunder per turn, obviously very useful as it's a key resource. And you've got all the other benefits which is going to make it a lot easier for you to be able to get a little bit stronger in case you might need some extra weapon strength, for example, if you go with corn, as you are dealing with a lot of enemies. Eventually, you know, player bias will kick in. Not only that, but you want to actually boost up your forces if you're going to launch a large invasion. Very beneficial bonuses here, which does make Norska a little bit less of a slog. Lastly, this event will pop up once early into your campaign and then will cycle every 30 turns. This is called Slave Trade, where you'll be able to get into good relations with other factions. Believe it or not, Norska are known as traders, and yeah, here you'll be able to team up with other factions, get some diplomatic bonuses with the Dark Elves, the Skaven and the Beastmen, the Warriors of Chaos, Norska, any of the main evil factions, and you'll be able to get a bunch of bonuses. Like, for example, you know, the Ogre Kingdoms and the Vampire Coast, you'll get upkeep reduction for your faction, you'll get extra growth, faction-wide casualty replenishment rates, and global recruitment capacity. This means that you'll be able to switch and just pick the one which is best for you as a player. You've got the option here. All these changes will be available to you very soon, as soon as this update releases. And there's a lot more to come. I'm going to be having a lot more videos coming out throughout the week. It's just one today as I'm pretty swamped with some personal matters. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below as the staff of this mod will be checking out the comments and viewing what you guys think about all the upcoming changes. As always, have a nice day and I'll see you all again very, very soon.